coming up in our next fight. Not quite up to the middle ways, but we're gonna see a couple 145 pounders. Piotr Gorecki versus William Tucker here at Triton Fights 6. And for those fighter introductions, let's go to our ring announcer, Steve Peacock. Now entering the cage from the blue corner, William Tucker. William Tucker, 20 years old, six feet tall, weighing in at 142 pounds. That is a tall featherweight here. That might be the tallest featherweight I've ever actually even heard of. Holy Six feet moly. tall, weighing in at 142. He's gonna have a height advantage here, certainly. William Tucker, we've seen some big names. Ryan LaFlair in a corner, Ray Longer in a corner. Now we've got a team name with one of the biggest in the history of mixed martial arts. He represents Enzo Gracie's Academy in Philadelphia. Eric, I gotta ask you, if you're fighting against someone who has a Ryan LaFlair, a Ray Longo in their corner, a Henzo Gracie on their team name, is that intimidating? I mean, from my standpoint, no, because I hang out with guys like that all the time. Like, those are my friends and my coaches, but I could see if you're from a smaller gym, it could possibly be a little bit intimidating. Now entering the cage from the red corner, Peter Gorecki. Peter Gorecki, 28 years old, 5'8", so he's gonna be at a significant height disadvantage here, four inches. How much does that mean, Dave? I'm not gonna ask Eric, because he's tall, so he's gonna tell you that height advantage is <laughs> everything. You are closer to my height, so how much does a height advantage mean in a fight? It means a lot, especially if you don't have a handle on how to gate distances, whether it's working for you or against you. You know, I'm unlucky enough to have to spar Eric occasionally in the gym. He's got a reach advantage on me, and uh, it definitely helps him. Piotr Gorecki representing UFC Staten Island. Pretty big name in his training team there, too. Yeah, they have a pretty big gym out of Staten Island. They got Coach Freddy over there, and he does a really good job with the fighters. I see uh, a couple other guys, Johnny Piero in his corner, as well as a few other Triton Fights veterans. And they're from a real solid team that goes real hard, and I expect fireworks from them. Piotr Gorecki, 28 years old on our tail of the tape, 5 feet 8 inches tall, making his debut, weighed in at 143.5. William Tucker, also under that limit, weighed in at 142 pounds despite being six feet tall and of course 20 years of age. Somebody's gonna have an unblemished and somebody's gonna have a blemished record after this. Here's our ring announcer, Steve Peacock, for the fighter introductions. From the space set, Westbury, New York, and streaming live around the world on Pluto TV, Tiger Life Energy presents Triton Fight 6. This event is being sponsored by Tiger Life Energy never tasted so good. Buy No Better Foods. Visit nofoods.com and use promo code TRITON25 to save 25% on your next order. Buy Footlux of Long Island Sports Medicine that helps improve athletic performance. And buy Can Sports Bar of Westbury, Triton, Triton Fights official after party. First up, we have for you a 20-year-old who stands at six foot tall and weighs 142 pounds. He is making his debut appearance, representing EEFC out of the blue corner, William O.A.B. Tucker. His opponent is a 28-year-old who stands at five foot eight and weighed in at 143 and a half pounds. He is making his debut appearance and represents UFC Staten Island out of the red corner, Peter Gorecki. Triton Fight 6, a featherweight prelim. Novice rules once again between Piotr Gorecki and William Tucker, two amateurs making their debut here at Triton Fight 6. And as we looked around, a great crowd here sold out the space at Westbury here on beautiful Long Island. Full capacity to see these amazing fights here at Triton Fight 6. And don't go anywhere. We've got a lot more coming up here on Pluto TV. A great fight card with one fight starting right now.
Gorecki and Tucker touch gloves. Gorecki coming out, looking for a, you know, try to establish that reach. Again, he's fighting a much taller fighter who you had, you would assume has a little bit more reach on him, right, Eric? Yeah, I don't know if he's a real six foot. You know, sometimes you exaggerate a little bit. <laughs> I'm not saying that he's not, I'm just saying from this angle, I just don't know how legit, but he does have a legitimate reach advantage of at least a couple inches. Oh, lands a big right hook coming through there. He's super Gorecki comfortable on his feet, super comfortable. Both of them at this point, no one making a move to go to the ground. And in each of our earlier fights, we saw the moves to go to the ground pretty early on here. It's looking more like your standard striking match. Nice little left coming through there from Tucker. William is using his distance beautifully. You can see he's real comfortable on his feet, like Eric said. And he's using that length that he's got very, very well. He's keeping Piotr at the end of his punches. Right there, we see the first kick from Tucker used effectively. And boy, you talk about a, a reach advantage. Look at the long legs on William Tucker. Some of that may be a little bit exaggerated because of the type of trunks that he's wearing. But still, those are some pretty long legs, especially for a flyweight. Lands a right, lands a left, another right. Gorecki looking a little dazed. Goes for the push away there and gets it. Already some knots showing up on Gorecki's head. Tucker's been able to land some stuff here. As you guys have said, comfortable on his feet. Does Gorecki try to move this to the ground perhaps, Dave? I I'm real impressed by William and stand-up. It's gonna be tough for Piotr to close the distance and get inside oh. for a takedown. That kick coming up the middle has looked like Gorecki might be going in for a takedown and lands on him. When you have a, a reach advantage and a high si size advantage like this, it's real important for the shorter guy to be beat the taller guy to the jam. He's trying to duck under these big strikes. Tucker is dominating on the feet now, and I don't know how much longer is left in this one. This does not look like a fighter making his debut because he is landing on the feet. I would beg to, uh, I, I, I would bet that Tucker definitely has some either a significant amount of kickboxing or boxing experience. Good head movement too. He's not staying still. Gorecki's throwing, and by the time those punches get over there, there's nothing to hit. Yeah, he's not just using his length, he's cutting angles, he's putting together smooth, crisp combinations. He's yeah. throwing body shots in there, head shots, he's kicking out the legs, kicking the calf real, real low. Gorecki's head yeah, starting impressive. to show some wear and tear as William Tucker, impressive here in his first ever round of MMA. 36 seconds left here in round one for the fighter who thus far dominating the fight. He is the much bigger fighter. He might tire out because of that. He's got a little bit more size to carry around. You never know, but he's not showing any signs of that now, Dave. He's real efficient in his movements. I don't see him. Nope, I don't either. And he's looking good. And boy, is he conserving energy and landing almost everything he throws. Of course, as I say that, he misses with the loop and run. Gorecki coming in. Every time Gorecki comes in, he's getting peppered with shots. Leg kicks, body shots, head shots, another big one. He might survive the first round, and he does. The way that he throws that two into that lead uppercut where he changes an angle is really impressive for somebody that doesn't have any professional or amateur fights before. That's like really high-level boxing that you really don't get to see very often, even on a professional level. Well, and that's the one thing. When someone's an amateur in MMA, they can be a professional in something else. We've seen that before. He certainly looked high-level on the feet. If you're Gorecki after getting honestly beat up in that first round. Do you look to maybe try to take it to the ground at this point, or because of those kicks that landed when he was ducking down, is that too dangerous? It's easier said than done. It's real hard to get past somebody's length who uses it efficiently. Like I said, as the shorter fighter against the disadvantage and reach, you really have to beat the taller guy to the jab. He's gonna have to beat the jab to get inside. Gorecki getting some advice from his corner. Hoping things work out a little bit better in the second round. I thought at one point in that first he might be finished, but he's made it here to the second round, which means he's got a chance to come back. He's game. He's definitely game. He's got no quitting him. He doesn't look phased. He's got to make this fight ugly. That's the way to win. He's got to move forward. He's got to push Tucker up against the fence. He's got to make this an ugly brawl. Well, he's breathing heavy, and Tucker is barely breathing at all. I mean, as you guys said, so efficient and crisp with that striking. I'm really impressed with the way he's cutting off the cage right now, too. His lateral movement is really, really good. A lot of good feints. William Tucker, only 20 years old. So if he has any kind of professional boxing experience, it can't be too much. He's only 20. He's a young kid. I don't think he's got any professional experience. Uh, Chris and Nick are pretty good at vetting their, uh, <laughs> their fighters here. But he's, oh, he's, he's got a lot of, lot of work in his stand-up. He looks real impressive. 
William Tucker representing Henzo Gracie Philly. So you think, hey, he's probably going to be pretty good on the ground, too. I mean, that's what Henzo's game is all about. Right now, content to dominate on the feet, and dominate he has through a round and a half at this point. Gorecki's landing a shot here or there, but he is just getting hit with combination after combination from Tucker, mixing it in beautifully well. He's having a real hard time getting past his length. That's where that reach advantage, which typically, though not always, comes with a height advantage. And Tucker listed at six feet tall, Peter Gorecki at 5'8". There he goes. Oh, I thought he was going to close the distance, but he chose to exchange. I'm surprised that he doesn't want to go for a takedown, even just muddy it up up against the fence. I think, you know, he, he's taken a couple of those kicks as he ducked under blows. And those legs from Tucker are powerful. So are the hands, as we're seeing here. Gorecki lands in a little counter there that works. Made Tucker back up for a moment. A leg kick and for his troubles takes a shot to the head followed by a shot to the body. Tucker moving in and out, head movement still there. Oh, deep leg kick right behind the left knee. A touch kick to the body. Now he's fainting with the kicks too. Yeah, Tucker is looking really good here. That's a high level feint, to feint with a push kick. That's something that you don't see in professional MMA often. He's getting a little cocky here. Saw the hands down as he went back there. I think he may be sensing the end and sensing that he's just on a different level than Gorecki. Landing combination, punch kick combinations, punch combinations, everything coming through. This is a high output from William as well. You don't see this many punches thrown per round in the amateurs. And to Gorecki's credit, you don't see this many punches landed and somebody still staying on their feet in the amateurs either. Well, this Gorecki's game, he's tough. got no, hit, no he's, quit. And he's still moving forward too when he has the opportunity. Yeah, well, unfortunately for him, he doesn't have many opportunities as Tucker continues to dominate this fight. He's easily up two rounds as we come here to the end of round two. We'll see what happens in round three if it does in fact get there. Eight seconds left in round two. Here at Triton Fight Six at the sold out space at Westbury on Long Island. All right, so I don't think we need to ask either one of you how you score that fight. I think it's pretty clear we've got a fighter up two to nothing, but if you're Peter Gorecki, you've had trouble closing the distance. When you've tried to, you've basically been hit with a bunch of shots as Tucker backs up. Eric, if you're Gorecki, how do you try to get back into this fight? You gotta finish it. I'm coming, I'm coming forward as hard as I can with my jab. Always trying to beat Tucker to the jab. Trying to push him up against the fence to just make this ugly. Try to out wrestle him. Try to just throw him off his uh, cadence as far as striking goes. Of course, William Tucker, I think, Dave, just has to keep doing more of the same, right? If I'm William here, the, the disparity here on the feet, I'm, I'm looking to fi finish in this third round. I, I'd really look to pour it on. He doesn't seem to have an issue with his gas tank. I'd look to really pour it on here. Gorecki landed a few shots in that second round. Clearly uh, hit by a high volume from Tucker. He landed a couple. Didn't look like he had much power that Tucker was worried about, which is why you saw the, the hands dropping towards the end of the round and Tucker, look, Tucker looking a little bit more confident towards the end of that round. It's we'll not see definitely what he does. lack of confidence. No, we'll see what he does in round three. And so far, that confidence is well earned. Both fighters making their debut here at Triton Fight 6. If you watch every time Gorecki lands, Tucker hits him with two or three jabs on the way out. And it's real demoralizing to land a very good shot on your opponent, something that you think is going to like accomplish you a little bit, and then get tagged or slapped in the face on the way out. It really misses with your head. It's also really high level from William. You know, he's making a pay for all his shots, jamming through all his counters. Body high shot level. lands from Gorecki, nice and solid. Probably the most significant shot he's landed. Seeing some sweat off of Tucker, finally. Wasn't showing any energy expenditure in the front. Oh. And there's the other problem. When you're coming in against a guy with that much length, if he puts a jab out there and you're trying to lunge in, you get caught like Gorecki just did. Oh, left head kick comes in and lands. Gorecki in trouble here. Still looking good. The right uppercut, the left hook. This is just a dismantling by William Tucker of Peter Gorecki, Dave. Wow, real nice switch jab right there by William. Super high level stuff. This guy's kicks and punches again. The Henzo Gracie name, you think he's going to want to get it to the ground and roll. He's happy on his feet, very comfortable there, and making an impression on the crowd here at the sold-out space at Westbury on Long Island. He's got a real good mastery of space and distance as well, and he really hasn't been dropping his hands much either. No. He's also shown an ability when moving backwards to still throw those counters and land them, in large part because he has that length advantage. If you notice here, 
especially in a lot of the novice guys who have under two fights, defensively people tend to back up in a straight line. William's not doing that. He's cutting angles, and he's really, really making Peter pay. He just went for the Street Fighter finishing move uppercut there. It did not connect, but it looked good from this angle. Peter Gorecki trying to figure out the puzzle that is William Tucker. So far, no answers with about one minute left in the round. Got it. Peter's game, Ooh. man. He's got no quitting. And he's just, still coming forward. Just throwing. landed a big right there to the head, too. Most of his shots have been landing to the body. That one came through to the head. Doesn't have a lot of time to work here, so I think he knows that. He knows his only chance of winning this fight is a finish. Doesn't look that likely, but stranger things have happened. Another thing Tucker's doing well, Eric, is when he's chasing down Gorecki, he's moving forward rapidly while still throwing accurate strikes, which is a difficult thing to do. He's definitely in the zone. He has that level, that laser level of focus that high-level strikers have. Now 30 seconds left. Gorecki with Tucker against the cage. Perhaps the best position he's been in through the fight. Maybe going for the moral victory takedown here. He's got one leg controlled. So he might be able to get him down. Only 20 seconds left to work. At this point, barring a miraculous occurrence, William Tucker has won this fight. But Gorecki, man, tough as they come. Fighting out of the UFC gym, Staten Island. I expect nothing less fighting out of that gym. Ooh, all, all those guys are tough. Shots at the end. Man, William Tucker and Gorecki coming up. A huge welt on Gorecki's right eye. It's hard to look at. Pretty big one on the left eye, too. I mean, he just took a beating from William Tucker. First ever fight for William Tucker. His MMA debut, incredibly impressive for this rangy fighter from Henzo Gracie's facility down in Philadelphia. Here we see some replays from the fight. Gorecki trying to come in and advance and ends up just catching a couple of shots. Every time he went in, he'd end up catching the shots and then pepping him with front kicks, head kicks, Dave. That replay right there was shows you how high level William Striking was. That was a switch step jab a la Dominic Cruz. TJ Dillashaw types, that was beautiful. Tucker moved incredibly well. Again, it's hard to gauge this because they were both making their MMA debuts here, but overall, you gotta like what you saw out of Tucker regardless of who the opponent was. I like what I saw at any level there. Yeah. That's the kind of showing that eh, you could look at this guy and think, eh, I might see him uh, fighting in some, uh, some places that you may have heard of someday down the road. Just taking his first steps into the cage here certainly did a fantastic job of it. Now with our official results, let's go back to our ring announcer, Steve Peacock. And now we go to the judges' scorecard. Judge A scored 26 to 30. Judge B, 27 30. Judge C, 27 30. And the winner by unanimous decision came out of the blue corner. William O. Oh.